Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Pubo Rama, and in today's video, we are going to be breaking into the Chop Shop. This is the news business that has been added into Grand Theft Auto Online. It's been out for a couple months now, and it actually got quite a big buff yesterday, allowing you to keep vehicles that you steal. That's actually incredibly nice. If we make our way over to the planning computer, we can see the car that we were able to keep this week, which is the Fister Comet S2 Cabrio. Essentially, if you actually complete the Elite Challenges, you get the car for absolutely free because it only pays about ten thousand dollars to claim the car and then it's like twenty thousand dollars to start the mission so in total it's thirty thousand dollars but if you do the elite challenge for the mission itself you're going to get 50k so you can actually make money and get a 1.7 million dollar sports car for free which is really really nice in today's video i'm going to be talking about the chop shop in total this is a business when it was first introduced into the game i really did not like it didn't make a lot of money but after rockstar has changed it a bit and after i've gotten to know it a bit more i actually think this is a pretty good business and especially if you want to save time and still make a lot of money i would definitely recommend to pick this up so let's get into it Let's start off with location. Making your way over to Maze Bank foreclosures, you will see that there are in total five salvage yards. Two outside of the city and three inside of the city. The two locations outside of the city are absolutely useless. We have Polito Bay and we have Sandy Shores. Sandy Shores costs you $2 million. And you might think, wow, that's cheaper than a lot of the other locations until you realize that Marietta Heights is only $2.4 million. Is it really worth it to save $400,000 to waste your time driving back and forth from the city to drop things off over and over and over. Just don't do it. It's a waste of time. I mean, sure, there are a couple missions where it might be faster to be in Sandy, but 90% of them are going to be done in the city. So uh, I would just recommend to buy the city locations. Speaking of the city, there are three locations in total. We have La Puerta, we have Strawberry, and we have Marietta Heights. These three locations I would say the worst is definitely La Puerta. It's not only the most expensive, but it's in the worst spot. It's inside of the salvage yard, so it's really annoying to drive to. Your vehicle doesn't spawn next to you when you call it in. The location's just not good. Don't buy La Puerta. I would definitely recommend to pick up Strawberry, but if you want to save a bit of money, then you can also pick up Marietta Heights, which are both pretty decent locations. I obviously don't recommend to really uh, customize the interior. However, it is pretty cheap, only $75,000. Trade rates are all right. It's $450,000, and the way it works is it makes all the Moore's Mutual Insurance claims half off. That's pretty nice. It also makes repairing vehicles in Los Santos Customs cheaper. So, I mean, if you plan on playing GTA for a while, maybe for the next year or so, then yeah, getting trade rates is probably worth it. However, if you don't, then uh, I can't really recommend to buy the trade rates thing. We also have tow truck. This is an absolute must have. Buy the beater tow truck. There's no advantage to buying the more expensive one. It's just the fact that the more expensive one looks nicer, but speed, overall tow truck missions, you're just saving $550,000. So buy the tow truck beater. And the staff upgrade is also pretty important. It is expensive at $625,000, but the staff upgrade allows you to have two vehicles inside of your workshop instead of one. So I would definitely recommend to buy all of those upgrades I just showcased. And the wall safe as well. The wall safe allows you to store more money inside of your building, meaning that you have to spend less time coming over here and grabbing it every couple of hours. So overall, I would actually say that almost every upgrade is very important for the chop shop. It's going to cost you around $4.5 million to get this business fully kitted out. Thankfully, it's going to be pretty easy to make that money back. Obviously, after splurging $4.5 million on a brand new property, you're probably going to want to start making that money back. So let's talk about the two different ways that you can earn money with the Chop Shop. We're going to start off with the simpler and, in my opinion, best way of making money with this property, and that is the tow truck missions. Once you purchase the tow truck upgrade, you will see in the corner of your chop shop a tow truck. And launching a tow truck job is really easy. These are only going to take you around three to five minutes at the max. All you need to do is drive your tow truck over to the marked location, steal the vehicle, bring it back to the chop shop. That's as simple as it is. Some of the missions involve you dealing with cops. Usually what I do is I throw a sticky bomb on myself, blow myself up, I lose the cops, hop back in the vehicle, and finish off getting to the 
the location. It's only like a 20 second inconvenience as it is. The jobs are incredibly easy, and if I get one where it wants me to drive like four to five miles, I'll usually just load into a new session, set my spawn location to the chop shop and start it up again. It's just way, way too easy to do these missions. And what is the payout like? Well, you can do two of these every 48 minutes. And judging that it's only going to take you around 10 minutes, that's not a lot of effort at all. In that amount of time, you're going to get $30,000 for each vehicle on average. It's going to take 48 minutes to deposit the money into your account, which you'll notice, but you are going to get about $30,000 for each car. So if you do two cars in 10 minutes, that alone is about sixty dollars to $70,000, depending on how much they're worth. And that is not the only way that you can make money with your chop shop when it comes to these tow truck missions, because when you're salvaging the cars, you also increase your income of passive money. And that's really, really good. Every two vehicles that you salvage gives you the maximum income of $24,000 every 48 minutes. If you don't want to source any more vehicles, that income is going to slowly decrease until you're not making any passive money. But I've done the math and sourcing just two vehicles, which will take you 10 minutes, is going to make you around $100,000 in passive income if you only do two vehicles and you just let it pay out. And if you add that to the around $70,000 you're going to make when it comes to stealing the two vehicles as well and getting the salvage value, that means that in total you're going to make $170,000 for about 10 minutes of work. That's kind of insane. Then we break into the other side of the business, which is the stealing and salvaging of high-end vehicles. In front of me, we have three cars, the Jubilee, the Cinquemila, and the S2 Cabrio. You are able to steal these three cars whenever you want, once a week. Yeah, it's, uh, it's really unfortunate on that one thing. Unlike other businesses where you are able to keep doing them over and over and over, once I have stolen these three cars this week, I have to wait till next Thursday until three new missions are added into the game, which is really unfortunate. Starting up these missions is pretty easy. You just pay $20,000 to do the setup cost, and now you can see we've got a couple different jobs we need to do. Usually, these mini heists are going to consist of four different jobs. The first two things you'll want to do is planning work. You have bypass module and VIP pass for the mission we have here. These should only take you about 10 minutes in total to complete. Then you make your way over to tasks and you have LS panic trailer and LS panic outfits. Doing all four of these tasks are probably going to take you around 20 to 15 minutes depending on how fast you are. I don't ever do the optional things. I mean, sure, they might save you a bit of time, but at the same moment, you're also spending a lot more time to complete the optional things. I don't really find them necessary if you just carry snacks and armor, so I can't really recommend to do them. In total, starting and finishing all of this is going to take you around 30 to 40 minutes if you add on the final heist. Stealing the vehicle is always really fun, and I think Rockstar did a really good job on the missions. It just really is unfortunate how long it takes to do these jobs versus the payout. Now, to be fair, it's not like the worst money ever. You can sell the vehicles for around $400,000, or you can salvage them for around $310,000. You should only salvage your vehicles and not sell them. You might be asking me, why the heck would I do that? I mean, we take a look at my Cinquemila here. I can sell the car for almost $400,000. We're salvaging it. It's only $300,000. Why would I ever salvage if it's paying me less money? Well, there's a very simple reason, and that is passive income. You see, when you sell the car, that's it. You get $400,000, boom, it's in your bank account, and you're done. But... When you salvage a car, you also get passive income added on, which means that that $300,000 gets an additional around $200,000 just from the passive income. So you're actually making around $100,000 to $150,000 more when you salvage your car rather than when you sell it. I mean, yes, if you need the money instantly, then I guess sell the vehicle. But I would highly recommend just to salvage the car. It's only a $70,000 difference between the actual payouts on the two vehicles. Then you just have to wait for the passive income to rack in that money. Something I should also mention is that if you have two vehicles on the lift, like I do right now, you are not able to salvage your cars that are also being stored inside of your garage. So just keep that in mind. I mean, it's not the end of the world because you can always just wait a little bit and then put this vehicle on the lift after these are gone. But uh, just in case you didn't know, now you do. 
You see, the thing about the chop shop is that on paper, it doesn't sound like it's good at making money because you look at it and you're like, well, I'm only able to steal three vehicles a week at max, even if I'm salvaging them for 500k a car, that means it's still going to take me about three weeks to make all the money back I've spent on the property, which technically makes sense. But the thing is, is that you're not constantly grinding. And that's where this business definitely feels a lot nicer. You see, a lot of other businesses in the game, you have to constantly do things to make that money back. Like, if I were to spend $10 million buying large warehouses for my special cargo, the only way I'm going to make that money back in any reasonable time is if I'm instantly grinding and sourcing crates over and over and over until I can sell them. And it's going to take me a lot of hours of grinding to make that money back. Where, if you compare that to a business like this, you only need to do three steals a week, because that's a maximum you're allowed, you'll make about $1.5 million there, plus you only need to do the occasional tow truck mission once or twice every 48 minutes, that's it. It's really not going to be that much time. You could probably put about four hours of an entire week into the chop shop and you would make your $4.5 million back in about two weeks of effort. That's really not that much time. I think the passive income is really what allows this business to be super nice. And the final thing that I haven't even talked about yet is stealing and keeping cars. This is the final thing that Rockstar is most likely going to be giving us the opportunity to do with the Chop Shop. But man, I am so happy they have given us this opportunity. You see, for a while, everybody was hoping that we were going to be able to steal the cars and store them in our garage. And obviously that wasn't possible until today. This week, for the first time, Rockstar has allowed us to keep a vehicle, the Fister Comet S2 Cabrio. And it's incredibly cheap. It's only $30,000 to keep the vehicle. It's $20,000 for the setup cost, $10,000 to store the vehicle in your own personal garage. That's it. And you can actually make that money back just by simply getting the Elite Challenge in the heist itself. So now you're able to keep millions of dollars worth of vehicles for free and that is why i think the chop shop is insane because no longer do you need the salvage cars you can literally just keep them and it's even better because if you already own the vehicles you can do the mission keep the new car you just got and sell the old one you already had for whatever the money you spent on it and boom you've just made a lot of profit so overall i actually think the chop shop has grown quite a bit on me originally i thought the business was the worst in the game because it really didn't have a lot of ways of making money but now that it's uh it's actually quite well known i think it's a great property and i actually think it's one of the better properties to purchase in the game i think it's good for beginners because of how easy it is to use and the fact that now you're able to keep supercars and sports cars worth millions of dollars Dollars. It's just a great property in general. Let me know in the comments down below what you guys think about the salvage yard. Do you think it's good? Do you think it's bad? Hopefully you enjoyed today's video and basically my full guide on it. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.